my demons and ghoulies. Uh, this intro is going to be pretty quick, but I just wanted to say that this sort of uh, big air quotes art course, how to digital art, is top on myself, but it is only in my Discord, like every ish Friday, every other Friday evening. Uh, so the next one, by the time you see this video, when it comes out, should be the upcoming Friday. If you're interested, just join my Discord, stick around, I should be posting notifications of when I will actually be hosting it, times, etc. Uh, it's a great place to just have fun, hang out, and maybe just learn a little bit. Uh, as much as I uh, have in knowledge, I am not a professional, but it is fun to share what knowledge I do have and help people along. So come along for the ride, and <laughs> maybe I'll see you there. Have fun if you do, and come say hi. I promise we don't bite in the Discord. Bye! <laughs> Here, no, I do not know what I'm sorry with. So. Oh my god, scoot. I'm looking at my first monitor. I have to like physically scoot my way over to the second one. And then I lost my glove. Where'd my glove go? Oh, it's on the floor. That's why. So I'm sharing like my whole screen because that way you can see my mouse. And obviously for all of this I'm going to be using Photoshop because I only have Clip Studio Paint on my tablet and I don't know how to record from that, but that's fine. And I'm going to go through literally right from the beginning of how I start digital art and go through like essentially like how I get my canvas all set up. Um, obviously everyone uses a different interface or uh, application, application yeah. program. A lot of the, the like tools are going to be relatively the same, or they're going to look the same and do the quote unquote same thing, but there's probably going to be some differences regardless. And I won't know everything about that, but I'll, I can probably try to guess <laughs> what they do. Um, but this is, this is what Photoshop looks like. It shows you all the stuff you worked on. But for me, hopefully this shows up if I hit new file. Yes. Do you see this pop up? So I get to make a document of whatever size I want. It I usually do, and this is just, these are print sizes, but that's just what's comfortable for me. I do 11 by 14 or 10 by eight, uh, or 8.5 by 11. And then I wanted to mention, cause this is really important and I'm actually gonna show an example. Why am I using my mouse instead of my tablet? There's something called resolution and on the side it says pixels slash inch. I don't know. Oh, they have it per centimeter. And there's a difference between DPI, which is dots per inch, and PPI, which is pixels per inch. And dots per inch is what I thought PPI was, but DPI is for your printer, and it's how many dots the printer puts on the paper per square inch. And then PPI is how many pixels are available for you to draw on per inch. So we're gonna start, I usually do 300 to 350. I think I've just stuck with 350 for a while. And I wanna show you the difference of using 72, like I have here. Actually, I'll just, actually no, I will do this one. <laughs> this is, so if I zoom in, it's not gonna show cause it's too, it's white. Scribble this, so if I zoom all the way in, Eventually, we start to see all these pixels. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna. Okie doke. <laughs> I'm gonna show you. So, this is what this drawing looks like at 72 dots per inch. And it looks fine. But then I'm going to go to. Da -da -da -da. Image. I think it's canvas size? Nope. It's image size, never mind. Image size, I'm gonna bump it to 350. And you can see like this little box, how much it zooms it in because suddenly you've got, instead of only, as an example, 72 dots in one single square, now you have 350. So what happens, give it a second. <laughs> so not only is the canvas actually bigger, but the image should be like, almost a little blurrier because it has to like fill in all those extra squares. Yeah. I thought the blurry might have been from the brush. I mean, the brush is a little blurry, but I 
Let's see if I can show like an example of. So that's a. This is a new stroke, and it's like much crisper. And this is yeah. like crunchy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. It's it's. It doesn't look like it makes a difference, but then actually when you get up close and personal, you can see. So let's do. No, I don't want to. Say so I'm going to start, I think, with my tools from the top left. We got the move tool, which if I have this, I can grab this, and it'll grab any layer that I click on and just transform. Not transform, but uh, just move it around wherever I want. And that does go for the background too. Oh, that's because it's locked. Then <laughs> it goes for the background too. <laughs> happened to me a couple times. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll like hit control or something and it snaps to this tool and suddenly I'm dragging the background off the page and I don't know why. Uh, this is the lasso tool. If you want to select a certain part of your piece and then drag it, oop, or drag it away, you can do that. And then I think there's also, in Photoshop, there's a square. There is a circle. And I don't mess with these two, the single row marquee and single column marquee. Because you just divide it. That's weird. I don't like that. We don't need that. And the lasso <laughs> tool is if you're like, I only want this part and then this part and then this part and then this part. And then right click and then drag out. I want these little pieces over here. So it's like, it's the lasso, or not the lasso, but it's the marquee tool, but like custom. You can do whatever you want with it. Yeah, you can do it. Okay, okay, that's and then the magic wand, there's a couple different ones of these. Magic wand is, is a select, so because there's nothing drawn in this space and I tap it, it'll select all that's equivalent to it. Empty. Yeah, and then if I click the circle, it'll select all of the circle because it's all touching. Uh, and then the object selection tool i don't really mess around with the quick selection tool i'm pretty sure it's like if you had a photo and you wanted to select something specific let me see if i can just uh, let's take I've, I've used those a couple times for cropping and making things <laughs> yeah so like i want to select all of the forehead and i would tap it and it just selects all of this area until here where the color difference is like a little too much mm. except i don't know why it grabs these but it's good for like if you want to grab something really really quick really, oh, really quick and specific. it's quick and specific like i just tap the yeah, eye and the i eye. just get the eye if i want the teeth i got the teeth okay. i used it a lot when i was doing like photo editing work mm. with like a, an actual like picture of someone like stuff like that that works a little bit better for yeah if you want to take like a bird or flower out of the picture yeah and you're like bam select that and you don't want to you don't want to waste your time being like <laughs> come on damn you this fucking bird <laughs> <laughs> This is the the crop tool, which is like I want to make my canvas smaller. My canvas is not smaller. <laughs> Very simple. Uh, oh, I have not messed around with any of these. They seem like fun. I don't know what they are. Perspective crop tool, a slice tool, and a slice select tool. I don't. Oh. And this, mm, this is new. Wait, what is? Oh god, <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> this one is... You know, I, I haven't really messed around with this too much. I don't even know the name, because there's like nothing else to click on, so it's just this little box. We're gonna, we're gonna skip him for now. now. I don't know why this is here suddenly, but that's okay. We got, actually, I'm gonna need a couple just like... The eyedropper tool, which is pretty self-explanatory. I want white, I click on the white. And this also actually works for the background for Photoshop too, which I think is really fun. So if you just are like, I want this color, I'm gonna make my 
a whole document. The background. <laughs> the background color. Eyedropper tool, there's the band-aid. I used to remember what this was. This is more, again, I think for photo editing. So I'm not quite familiar with it like I used to. And there's the brush tool, which is a brush. And I think that they have a pencil tool, a mixer brush tool, and color replacement tool, but honestly, you're probably not gonna need anything more than the brush because you can get a bunch of different stuff. There the uh, for for coloring, do you use the brush? Do you use the, the pen? Because I know I've noticed that on the brush strokes that you have on the page, uh, if you hover over one, it's like it gets darker. Mm -hmm. So like I don't know how that would uh, I know how it would affect the picture, like right? Because if you wanna have it all be the same color of blue, but then you already painted one and then you let go and then now you paint again, it'll change it. But is there a specific one that you like to use more when uh, when coloring an image, or is there a way to not have it uh, darken when you hover over it again? I'm a little lost when you say like darken again. I'm not sure if you mean like like this chunk here, how I like yeah. it. So that- yeah, when, when you put it over the other one, like it gets darker. Yeah, so this is an accident because if you come up to the top, you can have a certain- Oh, welcome back! You can have a certain uh, opacity to your brush. This is 100%. It is one solid color and you see if, if I go over it again, it's not any darker. This brush stroke was with opacity down to like 90 something. So when I have it like this, you can see already that this is a solid color, but this color is solid or is lighter than this color here. So if I go over it again, where they cross over, then it's darker. Usually I keep most of my brushes like at 100% opacity because otherwise, this starts to become a nightmare. <laughs> There's specific uses for it, like uh, like an eraser, but we that that's later. Okay. Yeah. No, just, just wanted to make sure. Oh yeah. And then there is the the stamp tool. This is again for like photo editing, but you'll hit Alt actually, and then click on a spot that you want to replicate, like maybe some grass. There's a frog over here or something. You're like, I don't want this frog just like takes that area <laughs> it's it's an example <laughs> or is that your point <laughs> I think it's not working because it's trying to if I did this like that it would. yeah so it like because it's reading that edge again it's coming back but so like I want right this far right here or if I want here, I can duplicate it like that. So it's, so it's is what it says. It's cloning it. Again, it's not really great for digital art, but if you're like photo editing, it's much better quality. This well, it, is. It, go ahead. You mentioned grass, and maybe you're doing like a scenery, maybe like the top right there. In that case, right, because you, you probably want to replicate trees or grass. Or it could work. It could work for that. There, I mean, it, it also depends on how you would like to work. You could easily, if you've got like a good chunk of grass and you're like, I like that, I want this over here. The only thing I will say with the, the clone tool, uh, yeah, the clone tool, is that if you use it, like if you had, <laughs> if you had like a certain like patch of grass, if you use it like a lot, like if you were to use it for the whole background, you might start to see the similarities, uh, and it would be like you would see like this again and again and again and again, and it might start to get obvious. But if it's a smaller um, little nugget of space, it would probably be a little easier to just quickly like use it and then be like, I'm done. That's it. <laughs> Excuse me. And that well, and if that if, if you're gonna do a smaller case, in that case, it would be better to find a brush, right? Like yes, and that is the fun part of, uh, well, just digital art in general, is that there's plethoras of not only brushes in general, but free brushes. I don't think I have ever paid for any brush pack in my entire life, because there's so many out there that are free, and you can make your own, which is really, really fun. Actually, this brush is something I 
No, I didn't make it myself. I modified something to make it more than I want. <laughs> um, and then I do have like my own brushes. But that, that's another thing that we're gonna do after. We got our eraser. And because this is all one image, as you can see, we got this layer over here. That's why we're seeing the very like checkered background. Otherwise, it would just erase whatever is on that specific layer. I'm actually gonna. It is also worth knowing your shortcuts. So for your brush, B is for brush. brush. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yep. E. Oops. Shit. Aw oh, man, I'm drawing all the same layer. God damn it! This is what you check. Brush. E is eraser. And then G is gradient, which we'll get to in a second. Pretty sure R is rotate. You can like freely rotate your canvas. This is for Photoshop. I don't know if they're going to be the same. The only ones I can probably guarantee might be the same. Z for zoom. Z might be the same across most applications. Uh, B is going to be the same for most, Z is going to be the same for most, E might be the same for most, I have no idea. Um, with G, you also get, uh, it's not just the gradient tool, which is really fun, uh, you get the paint bucket tool as well. <laughs> so they're together as one tool, but well, and the fun thing about gradients is this is like a, a whole this is a lot but it's uh you can customize all of your gradients and then you can save them however you want you can even change the opacity of each color uh so we have I think this is the color here and then this notch up top is what dictates the opacity so if i wanted to this one it says it's zero But it's not showing up. You can maybe see a little bit of it here because this is opaque and this is not. So if you were to change this to be 100% opaque, you can see your whole gradient. But then you can like, you could put in a third color and then see the difference between them. Maybe you want, I don't know why, you want a yellow there. Now it kind of <laughs> looks like, like the end of the earth. <laughs> and then, bam. <laughs> <laughs> and then there you have it. <laughs> and, uh, so let's take those off. And then for to get rid of them, I just click on it and I drag it off. And then I let go. So you just click to one point and it'll create it and then just click and drag it. Correct. So get rid of that. And I'm going to get rid of that color node because I don't want any color here. I just want the one. I like using these a lot. These are fun. They, they can help you do some pretty fun stuff, especially if you want something very subtle. Then, this is the oh, this smudge tool I feel like was many past artists, young artists, like favorite <laughs> tool. It's just like, I want to make these colors blend, so I'm just going to smudge. Because I know I used to use this stuff. And it, it's, it, that's what it does, it smudges, it smudges everything. I just think it doesn't do it in a nice way. I think you can achieve a better effect with uh, a few brushes or gradients. That, that is all. And then there is this blur tool, which I think is pretty similar to Sponge. Oh, it's just like blurring it ever so slightly. And then Sharpen, I think, is the opposite of blur tool. Oh, it's just making it really noisy. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> it's like you, you erased it too far and the paper is still <laughs> Yeah, like it's starting to like peel away. This is, oh my god, the dodge and burn tool is what I used to use all the time as a little baby artist. The, I'm not sure if I can actually make it, hold on, I'm gonna try and like, see if I can make my childhood dream. <laughs> just quickly go to uh... 
is your brush like a rectangle? Because that's the shape of the brush. Because they don't gotta be circle, they don't gotta be square. It's like, you can see it's got like even really cool chalky shapes. Yeah. That's the fun part of the brushes. <laughs> Let's give them blue eyes, I guess. Cute! Okay, so. Looks like me. <laughs> Where's your nose? <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. So the, the, the dodge tool essentially like super brightens any color you're working with and I used to use it for highlights because it basically just like it, it does like this weird like brightening and I can like overlap and make it just like <laughs> I see. Mm -hmm. Is the is the white that appeared in there is because of the background? Uh, let's check. No. So it literally like lightens the color to an extreme degree. Oh, okay. And then okay. the, the burn tool, as you probably can guess, makes the color very, very dark very, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, again, like, I used to use this all the time when I was first doing digital art. So I was like, I don't need to know colors, I can just use this. Like, this just makes it dark. And now I have shadows, and now it's good. But if you see, <laughs> like, if I keep going, it just makes it, like, <laughs> it kind of looks like it's been burned a little bit. <laughs> like, it got yeah. extra crispy. Uh, so I would suggest not using these. You don't need them. <laughs> <laughs> you you can achieve better, and then the sponge tool. I think from the name, I think it's like picking up some of the color. It's like almost erasing it because we can see some of that blue underneath. Or is it just taking away the color? Yeah, it's looking like it's gray. Hold on, let me see if I can take another color. Oh, it is just making it gray. Ew, you don't need that either. <laughs> <laughs> That's nasty. Um, then we have the it's the pen tool. I don't use this too much just because it's really, really hard to use in Photoshop and it's not featured a lot in other art programs as far as I'm aware. But also uh, Adobe has a separate program, Illustrator, that deals a lot with the pen tool instead. But essentially it's you make points and if I click and then drag, it makes a curve. And it's you're sort of drawing with these points and then they make a shape when you're done and I hit enter. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I never quite figured out how these work. But let me just try something really quick. Did that work? Okay, yeah, so now I have like a little shape. And you can as you draw it, if you wanted to do something really quick, it's probably fine for it. If it's like I just wanna make this shape. And then you're like, I want the stroke, which is that five points per pixels. I want it really thick. And then I want to fill it with this color. And then you're like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can, uh, because you see all these points still, and you won't be able to like really do too much with it, you can just right click on it. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, is it not here? Oh, because I'm on, I gotta click the lasso, then right click, and then rasterize layer, and then it's like, you can treat it like a normal layer, you can erase it, you can do whatever you want to it, which is nice. You're probably not gonna use it too much, I typically don't, unless I want, like, really nice text sometimes, and even then, I'll just use the next tool, which is the text tool. <laughs> <laughs> and then the text tool is, you got this little, um, little symbol that you see in Word, Word documents. You click down, well, that's not the one. click down, you see some text, you type your text, you change the color of your text. But the fun part, I think, that's probably not in Word, is that if I hit this T with a curve, I can select the style and I can give it an F if I want. So if I wanted text around a circle, this is what's really good. I like, I haven't used too much, is that there's horizontal distortion and vertical distortion. And that sort of changes like the perspective of it. So if I do this, it's now like, yeah, and then vertical. It is a little trippy. 
I try not to use it too heavily. This is like if it was inside of a tool. This is really fun. I like this one. This one is a little easier to look at than the horizontal. But but yeah, it works great for te it's, it's great for text. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> There's. That be cool for like if you had a Like on a yeah, and you could have it like my brain went to like a rolled up piece of paper, but yeah, let's yeah, yeah. like on a frisbee if it's being thrown, and then if I hit the lasso tool and then I right click on it and then hit rasterize layer because maybe it is on some sort of. Some of it is getting cut off. Now that we've rasterized the layer, we can erase it so that still, like, little bits of it. Oh, this doesn't show up too well. But little bits of it are there, but we can get rid of whatever we need, which is always nice. And then this tool. We're not going to worry about. I don't think it's really going to This, the next one, is our shapes. And so. I want to make a circle. It's basically like the pen tool, but like a little quicker, because I can make a circle. If I right click it, I can choose a rectangle, I could choose a circle, I could choose a triangle, polygon, a line if I really want. And then the custom shape tool, I actually... Photoshop like preloads it with like weird patterns of like trees and stuff, so it's not really worth looking into. Um, yeah, but it's a, just the same as the pen tool where I can change the thickness of the circle and I can change the color of the inside of the circle. So it's basically the same thing, just maybe a little nicer. And the other one I will explain is that if you want a circle, just like a whole circle, that's what you want. You can just do pixels instead of shape because the shape, when you have it set to shape, is what allows you to sort of edit the appearance before going to erase it. Because right now, I can't erase it. Because the shape layer must be rasterized. So like, once it's rasterized, then I can erase it. You just want a circle, pixels, and a pixel. And I got a circle. So just a very, very quick, I need some circles. Let me get those down really quick. <laughs> and then that's it. <laughs> uh, and then this tool here, this little hand, I'm pretty sure this is the rotate tool. So you can just be like, I really, and it sounds weird to be like, why don't you rotate your canvas? But some, there's sometimes, there's just this, a few angles where I'm like, I just need to, to have this here. And then I can draw. I do that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then. that I like about Photoshop is that it has what's called the scrubby zoom and it's it helps because I have a tablet so I'm not sure how it would work because it was the same thing else. It allows me to click and drag from side to side and that will zoom it in or out rather than manually hitting this and then hitting like this little magnifying glass and then clicking to zoom in like that. I can just do So that is predominantly most of our uh, tools. There is also rulers. I'm not sure if other programs do this or not. If I click and drag on the little you know, up top, bring up this blue line, and if I draw upon it, I'm pretty sure it snaps to it. Yes, it does. Which is always nice if you really want something like that. Another way to do it and not have it just uh, have a blue line on your is to hit the shift key and that will give you nice straight lines no matter where you're putting your mouse. And then that also works for diagonals. So if you wanted to do like a certain line to a certain spot, like I want a line here to here, I would tap with my pen there and I hit shift and I click on the second line and it makes a perfectly straight line. Um, and then I 
guess to go over the other side, if you uh, you should be able to see. These are this is my color palette. I can change which one it is. I used to have it where uh, I can change it. Oh, I can't. Brightness cube. I, don't know. I think it's the color wheel. This is the one that I usually have. It is an entire ring of the entire spectrum of the colors. Because usually, if I go back to the hue cube, there's no connecting the uh, like hot pink magenta color to our traditional red color. And uh, although you probably can still get the same colors with the hue cube, it's just nice to be able to like flawlessly travel between this little spot here. And then this the dark corner is where your saturation increases, but also the light decreases. Uh, the light corner is less saturation, uh, but it's a lot brighter. And this corner is maximum saturation, aka the brightest color you're gonna get uh, with this little triangle. The properties layer, I don't ever pay attention to. It's just telling you like uh, stuff about your canvas and if you want to change stuff. It, it don't it don't matter, I promise. Unless you really want it to. And then your layers are your layers. They tell you what is what. I would suggest doing what I don't do and name them. <laughs> I'm trying to get better at naming my layers so I don't accidentally start scribbling in the wrong layer. Um, but you can name them. In Photoshop, I don't know if other programs have this, but if I double click on the actual box, I have a bunch of layer styles. So one of them, for example, is a drop shadow. I'm not sure which layer this is. Drop I could also bevel and emboss the layer, which doesn't show up too well. It's a bunch of other stuff. It's very, very minor. I don't usually mess with it too, too often. Um, and not many other programs have it, so it's not super, super, super noteworthy. Um, excuse me? <laughs> what was that little accordion? Oh. <laughs> It's okay, it startled me. Um, over here is these, the channels and paths don't really matter too much. The channels are basically the light channels, so RGB is everything together. Red is obviously the red channel, green is green, blue is blue. I will use these sometimes to get a chromatic aberration effect. So let me let me take let me take the disc. <laughs> Actually, let me take our little our little face here. That might be better. Chromatic aberration is if you've ever seen like a glitch in a purposeful glitch in a video game where you see like it looks like where it's that bright 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 blue on one side and it's like a hot red on the other side. That is what chromatic aberration is. But the way I do it is layer to face. Double click on this layer. And then this is the channels here. And then I have it just be the red channel. And then take our little move tool and hit the arrow key to bump it over a couple times. So now we see like just that blue. And then I'll take this one. And I think I want. Take our move tool and pop it over a few times. Yeah, it's yellow. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, I don't know why that is. You think I have to have the green and the blue? I thought it was one, but it's not. But that's how you get like that. And you can you could put them on top. Like the, the, the old green yes, that's exactly the way you should describe it. it. Like if you put on your 3D little like cardboard glasses, you would see like the whoa. The effect. <laughs> Put them on. I don't know if it would work. Oh my god, yes. Gives me time to take a sip of water. 
Oh no! <laughs> I'm so glad that works. I didn't think it would. The one last thing I want to mention, uh, they don't talk about it, or they don't, I don't use it too much in Photoshop, but I've used it much more frequently in like clips to your paint, is this, these little color swatches right here. There's, uh, I can't remember what it's really used for in Photoshop. There's probably an explanation of there. It's not that significant. But I will say, you can select the second square and then pick whatever color you want. I'm just gonna pick the background color. And it doesn't, it's not changing anything, it doesn't change anything with the brushes. The only thing is that there are some tools or brushes in Clip Studio Paint that will require like two colors. So like it'll be a print of a rose or something and they want like a color for the liner that's already in that brush and in the background color for that brush. It doesn't make too much sense because I can't show it, but it's not that important, but I figured I would mention it anyways. And then with that comes to the end of the tools. And I guess uh opens up the floor for any questions. Excuse me. I would use it. Circle, which I'm sure you could use it for something. Same with spiral. I don't know why you would use it. Parallel lines. And then radial and mandala are really, really fun to play with. So the radial is like... It's just, it looks, it, it's just really fun to mess up. Oh, I'm on white. That's why. The For Clip Studio Paint, it is, I'll show you. <laughs> I can draw. Yeah, I could draw it out for you. Clip Studio Paint unfortunately does it really silly. They have it's in your tools. There's going to be a triangle that looks like this. It's it like a like an actual like straight edge ruler, and if you click on it, it doesn't have like a list. You have to like physically. If you're explaining something here. You're really breaking out in and out. <laughs> Am I clear for you, Kila? Yeah. Good for me. Are you out somewhere? Galaxy? It could be that. Because you're breaking up a little for me, too. Okay. I don't 
don't know why though. It doubts up the Y function. <laughs> okay. But yeah. Brick Clip Studio. Okay. It looked like this. Oh. Oh, oh, I, yeah. I don't see it. Let me see if I can find a picture. Hold on. I'm gonna open up the program. Uh, Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just, it's just for Clip Studio Paint, you gotta draw the line yourself. You have to physically draw it yourself, but you should be able to hit shift and you can drag it straight down, and that will give you a perfectly straight line. Or if you do it straight across, straight across, you can do it that way too. Uh, it's a little trickier that way because it's freeform, whereas Photoshop is just, it hands it to you right away. I don't know. There might be like a radial or a mandala. There might be a mandala in Studio Paint. I don't know. Uh, they have linear ruler, a curved ruler, a figure ruler, a ruler pen, a special ruler, a guide, a perspective ruler, and a sy symmetrical ruler. Oh, obviously we know what the symmetrical, symmetrical is. I don't know about the other ones. Maybe the special one or the custom one? I wouldn't know. Uh, but they're the uh, they're pretty niche use. The symmetrical one is probably the one you want uh, most frequently. It's yeah. it's 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 a lifesaver for sure. <laughs> uh and then So the one thing I think I'll do is this is a oops, hold on, this is not fully opaque. <laughs> Let's say you want to erase something but you don't have like uh you want this is like I'll get it, this is gonna be pretty niche use, but if you want it to be like textured, because maybe you can't find a nice textured eraser and you've got one like mine, where it just kinda looks like this. Which is fine for most uses, by the way. I love using just a regular eraser. But if you maybe want, like, uh, here, hold on. This piece I did recently, where I wanted. I like my needed eraser. I've used that in Clip Studio Paint. I do like that one. But, like, I wanted this, like, chipped paint looking texture. I was like, I can't erase that. There's no way I could do that. So if I go in Photoshop, and there's gotta be a way to do it in Clip Studio Paint, I just don't know how. There's like a circle, or a square, with a little uh, circle in the center. If I click that, it gives me a mask. So I can essentially draw yeah. on it. And I can get... Are you talking about the create layer mask? I think so. Yeah, it's the same thing. So, yeah. so now I can, quote unquote, I'm erasing this layer, because if I go underneath it, we can see straight through it. But I'm erasing it with the nice texture of my brush, and I can even like go half and half. Maybe I want like a little bit to come back. Maybe I want it. Oops, that's wrong. If I go back to white, I get more of it back. Maybe we can just go back and forth. Again, it's pretty niche, but it's still fun to mess around with unless you can find a good like textured eraser if you really want. But like in this case, I don't think I'm gonna be able to find an eraser that can do like that. So. It's good to know for the, the little scenarios. Oops, I did not want to save this. <laughs> but yeah, and then obviously you could hit control save and that's how you save it, and then it could, or save as, and then that turns it, copy, and you can make it a JPEG, and blah, blah, blah. That's a super important. Um. It, at least for a first lesson, or just a good general setup, a good way to familiarize yourself with the stuff you got. Uh, if there's any questions, the floor is open. But also, if you're if you want topics for next as well. Um, well, at the beginning, when we talked about the certain pixel. Mm -hmm. 
do you recommend a higher point soul? Because uh, I know, uh, I know that we've, not we've, but uh, I've been using thumbnails and stuff for different videos, YouTube videos, mm -hmm. and sometimes when I upload it, it might be too big for any smaller pixels. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's going to be a thumbnail, it should be smaller pixels, and then if it's going to be just drawing like a big, big pixel, then it should be... I think it's definitely worth messing around with. Because I, I find that even if you have like a high pixel image, once you make it, like if I had, this is like 450, and I went down to like something super small, like an inch to an inch and a half, you can still get like a fair amount of quality within. Why am I not trying? The wall? Oh. You can still get like a fair amount of quality, it's just like a lot smaller, and the file size will be a little smaller. Um, I would try it, I, but I don't think, I guess it depends on the kind of thumbnail. Well, not, not necessarily the thumbnail, was the first thing that came to mind, because I know all the thumbnails are like, hey, it has to be this small or anything, it has to be uploaded. Yeah, they have to be like uh, small on a certain size uh, and shape. I would say give it a shot. You could do, um, I'm trying to think. If you... If you really want to go like the extra mile, just like upload, quote unquote, upload two videos and then use uh, a smaller, large, the smaller uh, resolution thumbnail and then try like a larger resolution thumbnail and see if you can see any difference. I don't think you're really going to, so it might be worth doing something smaller in terms of resolution for that, but obviously for like an art piece, it is. 1,000% worth having a larger uh, PPI for that. Okay. I think I've usually been using so many because I wasn't sure. Bump it up. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Bump up the jam. Bump it up. <laughs> As for the next lesson, uh, I don't know what you play in. How you do? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, like I've been, I've, I see, I've seen a lot of videos of different artists, uh, how they do their process, and sometimes like there's a bunch of lines on the screen and you can barely figure it out, but then slowly like they, they clean it up, and then, like you can start seeing the, the image clear and clear. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I've always wondered like, is that all one layer? Have they just have to do they lower the opacity of one layer and then start? second layer and then can we draw or like how do they do that process of you know, like, you know, the short answer is yes they do all that they all do it differently but the long answer I can definitely do in another topic or another video listen I'm gonna write down now so I don't forget so I will <laughs> so I wanna go over and stuff like that, because that's really fun. But that, that can go to good dirt. With that. I'll just call it sketching. <laughs> sketching slash how to start. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I, I have other ideas that I just want to have them down for the future stuff. Uh, but the other one was like, uh, just because it's It's a trick I'll teach you later. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'm interested to see how you, how you blended those. I know you showed me a couple of those, the, the smudge and the other ones. And I feel like you probably found something better than I got those. something better. <laughs> so that, that, that one's interesting. Yeah, that's definitely like with brushes and how you use them. Uh, so we can definitely cover that with that as well. We're just going to get all the good stuff with that next time. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, you know, uh, I don't want to all in one video. Oh, no. I, I mean, do them for YouTube, but, like, the more videos, the better. Yeah, but, although I don't think, like, going over brushes isn't going to take too, too long. The sketching might take a little longer, but it's still, like, so I, I like having it be around an hour-ish 
of recording, if not, because uh, I feel like it's a good chunk of time to process everything, so I think those topics should fit fine. And then I have one more, <laughs> which is, which is uh, I've seen you use it a lot, and uh, sometimes you have like a base color for the whole sketch. Yes! And then, and then you start drawing on it, and then like... Uh, the base color is like their skin color, I would yes. say. Yes. And and so, so like, I wonder how you do that. I, I know I, exactly I what you're talking about. It's because I've, I've seen, I saw Celeste do the same thing in one of her Instagrams or TikToks. And they had like a blue or green layer to the character. And then they, they added colors to it. But then if they, if they drew over a piece that didn't have that color, they erased it. But they, they still had that layer. But mm -hmm. they just kind of like, it seemed like they just dropped it like if it was the, the bucket tool. And I'm like, I don't think that's how it was. But <laughs> yeah, so, there's, that's an thing. there's a couple of programs. I know that Procreate on the iPad does this where if you have like your line art, you can physically just drag the color, drop it in, and it'll just like magically fill everything in the lines. It's I can, I can, I can second that from first hand experience. It's wizardry. It's, it's magic, but I'll, uh, I'll definitely mention how to do that. This video was made possible with the support of my patrons. $5 ghoul shoutout goes to Lapis Dragon 01 and Kelly. A special shoutout goes to my $20 demon tier patrons, Mimi Chai and Jay Lops. See you guys next time. Bye!